So, uh, as you know, for the last um, sort of nine months or so, we've been very involved in doing the sort of work that's necessary to make decisions around the future use of the land. And so today we have a continuum of that process uh, with some more rezonings. So the first announcement I want to make today is that 8,300 non-residential properties across the Greater Christchurch area uh, in what is known as the unmapped white zone uh, have been rezoned green. These properties are a mixture of commercial, industrial, uh, Ministry of Education, District Health, uh, parks, reserves and other community facilities such as halls, churches and childcare facilities and undeveloped private land. This announcement clears the way for normal insurance and consenting processes to determine where rebuilding and repairs on a large number of non-commercial, non-residential uh, properties can occur. The owners of these properties uh, needed clear guidance so that they uh, could progress using insurance processes and consenting procedures uh, to apply their, to their properties and we have uh, delivered that opportunity for them today. Today's announcement also has 341 properties. Um, I should start by saying we're going to rezone today a further 758 properties in the Greater Christchurch area. Uh, they have been in the orange zone and they are today going to be uh, rezoned effectively. And that will mean that we'll have at that point rezoned around about 90% of the around 9,700 properties that have been orange since June. Well, some people have waited a very long time and a few are still waiting, uh, we are making good progress. The liquefaction and lateral spreading issues um, that have uh, uh, caused all of this uh, consideration uh, have been unprecedented, as you know, anywhere else in the world. So caution has been uh, the right way to go. There are still just over 900 properties left in the orange zone and rezoning of those properties will take place as quickly as possible. We have 341 properties today rezoned green. All of those properties will be uh, in the technical category 3 for any foundation repairs required. There will be 908 properties remaining in orange while that land remediation solutions are further considered uh, and we would expect to have um, most of those decisions uh, by at least February but I would hope much sooner and I stress much sooner. Just to let you know where those uh, areas are, uh, they are in uh, Kaipoi West, Parklands, Burwood East, Burwood, Horseshoe Lakes, Dallington, Avonside. Those that are staying orange for various reasons um, uh, are, are staying orange because they have a range of complexities that we need to deal with and to be certain about before we can make a final decision. So these maps which are also in your media pack show you where these areas are. Uh, this one is in uh, South Brighton. These are in uh, Avonside, uh, a little bit of Lower Dallington, um, some North Dallington, and around on the edge of Wainoni there at the bottom of Porrot Park. We have uh, some in Mariha, two areas there that are going green. Uh, some on the north side of Horseshoe Lake uh, going green with a number remaining orange. Uh, these little uh, blocks here are very small areas in Wollstone that are now going green. We have Kaipoi West, uh, some 27 houses out there uh, that will go green as a consequence of today's announcement or the considerations that lead, lead to today's announcement. And that leads us to the balance of those properties uh, being zoned today. Brooklands, as you know, has been a, an area that was uh, uh, profoundly hit in the 4th of September earthquake and suffered a considerable amount of damage. Subsequent earthquakes haven't assisted uh, the repair of that land in any way at all. Uh, and uh, what we do know is that in order to make that uh, part of Christchurch where you could have safe building platforms, there would need to be some very substantial um, area-wide remediation treatment. That remediation treatment would require the removal of all, ha all houses uh, all roads and all other physical features on the landscape in order to achieve it. The land would need to be raised between 600 millimetres and 900 millimetres with some perimeter wall treatment to the north east of, um, northwest I should say, of Brooklands, quite possibly in other parts depending on the depth of fill that was required. 
The Brooklyn's uh, residents um, would then have to spend a very significant amount of time off their properties as the uh, remediation work was undertaken, uh, as roading was put back in along with all of the other horizontal infrastructure, the land was resurveyed and the sections handed back to those residents. Uh, this would effectively be like creating a new subdivision. We know that that would be time consuming, that it would be very expensive and that it would be extremely intrusive into the lives of the individuals concerned. It also uh, leaves us in a degree, with a degree of uncertainty about the viability of the uh, area for residential occupation. I stress that that last judgment is not an engineering one, it is a, a, a based on the, on the societal issues. So the 417 properties that are in Brooklands, uh, as shown on your maps, are being zoned red. This means that homeowners with insurance will be able to access one of the two government offers that have been made to other red zone properties. Brooklands is in the red zone because the uh, land in this area is unsuited for co uh, continued residential occupation uh, and would remain so for a very considerable period of time. I know that this decision will be quite distressing for a number of people and I appreciate the feelings that they'll have. But I am confident we're making the right decision uh, for the future of those landowners uh, and their families. We are today arranging uh, communications to be uh, uh, held with those families uh, and Roger will give you the details of exactly what Sarah are doing to convey that. So to summarise today's announcements, the positive aspect is the 8,300 commercial properties that are going to be rezoned to green. Uh, that uh, we have a further 300 odd houses that are rezoned from orange to green that we have uh, a less positive announcement, I guess, but um, not to be seen as a negative. We've got a large number of houses that remain uh, in the uh, orange zone while further consideration is given to the future of that land. And we have, uh, unfortunately, 417 properties that are going to be red in the Brooklands area. Um, I think this is going to be hard news for a lot of people out there. Um, and I'd encourage anybody who is actually affected by these decisions, whether they be turning red or turning green, to make sure they do actually get support from friends, family, or the other support services the government offers. Um, but I've, you know, I've spent a lot of time looking at this Brooklyn's decision and going through the numbers and going through the analysis, and I'm absolutely sure it's the right decision we're making here. We're um, delivering letters to all the people in Brooklyn today. They should have them by by the time they see this on the news tonight to make sure they do actually get a, um, an individual notification. For people who aren't in Brooklyn, the people who are um, turning green, we're posting their letters out um, tomorrow and the next day, so they will be getting letters. But the ones, the people in Brooklyn who are actually um, the most affected, they're getting a hand-delivered letter today. Um, information about the, today's decisions are on our website this afternoon. Um, they should be there now and we hope to have it all going on Landcheck by four o'clock. There's just a lot of data you have to load into Landcheck and that just takes time, but we're, we're, very, we're very confident we're gonna have Landcheck going so you can put your, in your individual information by four. But for people like Brooklyn's, it's pretty clear. Um, so that, this is actually all of Brooklyn's now, is now read. There's a few lifestyle properties around which aren't in this decision, but everywhere else in Brooklyn's, it's, it's, it's become read. So there'll be information in the, um, in the press on Saturday and also local papers next week. Um, we'll also be doing community meetings for people who are affected, um, in particular for the people who've turned red. Um, and we see it's important that we do actually face up and talk to those people face to face so they can understand um, about what it means for them. Just also in our communications, we've, um, I participated yesterday in a panel discussion um, with, between myself, um, TNT, DBH, IAG, Department of Building and Housing. So it's a panel discussion trying to um, get people to understand more about the land decisions with the new um, foundation standards. So we're gonna screen that on Māori TV at 1.30 on Saturday, um, and then also on CTV at 9.30 on Sunday morning. And after that, it'll be on our website. So we know there's a real hunger for information about these new foundation standards, especially for people in TC3, so we thought the format of putting it on free-to-air television where hopefully everybody can get access to it, and then on the web, 
as a way of us trying to get that message out there. So we'd really encourage people to watch those programs. Um, the red zone settlement process is progressing well. Um, about 95% of people have returned their consent forms. Um, so we can now, you know, move on to, you know, processing this, processing their, um, their, their, their decisions. And up to, uh, so far, about 40% of the 6,000 people have turned red so far, about 40% have so far um, formally accepted either, the, either one of the two government offers. So about 40% have accepted one of those two offers. And of that, about 70% are taking option, option two, and about 30% are taking option one.